All right, good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order the January 8th, 2020 Community Mental Health Program and Budget Meeting, and we'll start by reading of our mission statement, Macomb County Community Mental Health, guided by the values, strengths, and informed choices of the people we serve, provides quality services which promote recovery, community participation, self-sufficiency, and independence. With that, I will take a motion to adopt the agenda. Motion from everybody, support from, motion from Megan, support from Tony. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. The agenda is adopted. Next is hearing of the public. No public being present, we will close the hearing of the public and move on to item 5A, request to approve a request for the cost of the survey for CARF accreditation. I will take a motion to approve. Motion from Selena, support from Ryan. Dave, take it away. Um, CARF is the uh, accreditation that we currently have. We do have plans in the future to look at NCQA, um, and we are moving in that direction. But for now, it's CARF. Um, they come out once every three years. They update their standards um, on a regular basis. So there's cost associated with buying their materials and then actually paying for the, the cost of the um, accreditation survey. Um, I have not been involved with one here at um, Macomb County Community Mental Health. I've been involved, my former company was CARF accredited. Um, so I don't know how many people they send out, but usually it's about a three day process. Um, so this um, board action will allow us to um, cover the cost of the, the survey and the materials associated with that. Any questions? All right, seeing none, we have a motion in support. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Next is 5B, request to approve the fiscal year 2020 PIHP contract amendment 2. Take a motion to approve. Motion from Lori, support from, is that Selena? Mm -hmm. Okay, Selena, Dave, any comments on this one? Um, I've shared this information electronically. Um, there was a number of attachments. So they sent a clean copy, a red line version and things like that. My email summarized the, the main differences. One of them being the Michigan Department of Corrections. Um, there's some new, um, standards expectations in that area that they're looking to go into effect as of April 1st. Um, so that was one of the, the major changes into our contract. So again, the, the, the state submitted new Medicaid waivers that went into effect in October and there was corrections and uh, changes that they had to make. So last year, this year, and probably for our future years, we should probably expect more um, amendments to our contract than we have historically. Just things are changing faster than ever right now. But I do recommend and support the, that we sign this and get it back to them. Any questions or comments for Dave on this one? All right, seeing none, we have a motion and support. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Next is item six, receive and file. We have no items under that. Item seven, resolutions. No resolutions. Uh, we'll move on to number eight, other agenda items. We'll start with Dave first and go around the room. So I don't forget, um, February 7th, TJ has been um, circulating an email for the group home traveling tour, as he's calling it. Um, I saw pictures. Um, he does have a 14-passenger uh, bus booked for that day on uh, February the 7th, starting at 9 o'clock in the administrative building. Um, we'll be looking at four or five of the group homes, and he says it's uh, of a diverse degree, so it will be a nice cross-section of our facilities and uh, the people we support. Um, so if you have not already responded, 
Um, and if you're interested, please, if you can contact either TJ or myself. Um, and if you have responded again, it's nine o'clock. We'll be leaving from the administrative building on February the 7th. I've also asked Cindy to attend with us um, on the communication side and we'll be able to snap some pictures and um, share some information after the fact if you weren't able to attend. Um, and I'm sorry, I was on a, a phone conference with the other PHP uh, CEOs for a good three and a half hours right before this meeting, um, which didn't leave me much time to get everything else prepped. A um, couple of big things going on at the state. One is the, the system redesign, which continues to be the, a big topic of conversation. Um, Director Gordon gave his presentation. There were the, the press releases. Um, tonight is the first of the public forums. Um, I'm getting text messages from people attending that. Um, I was unable to attend because of this meeting, and I think the only one I can actually make is the webinar one um, later on. Yeah. Um, but tomorrow morning, I'll be meeting with the department inclusive of Sarah. Um, Sarah has requested to meet with Willie from Wayne County and Anya from Oakland County and myself as well, so we're scheduling that. The three of us are planning to finalize our prep uh, tomorrow um, before or after the, the meeting with the department. Um, so I'll provide updates. Does that become available? Since this is program and budget, the state notified us that um, they had improperly funded us for deceased beneficiaries in fiscal year 2014-15 um, to the tune of about a little over $2 million. Um, their plan was to start just withholding those funds from us um, a little bit every month for the remainder of this fiscal year. Not too happy with that, given the fact that our funding continues to be, um, it's, it's a mess is the only term for it. Um, I reported last time that our October funding file was way off. They were supposed to correct it for November. They corrected some of it for November, continued to be heirs into December, we're hoping some of that, all of it, would be fixed for January, but we still haven't seen it. We're a quarter of the um, way into our current fiscal year, and our revenue is not clear. And on top of that, now they want to take $2 million out for their heirs from five fiscal years ago. Not sitting really well. Um, and I plan on sharing that with the folks from the department tomorrow. Um, there's arguments that can be made that the current funding model was based on those, the incorrect numbers, and it's supposed to be actuarially sound. I, it simply cannot be actuarially sound because it feels like they're just spinning a wheel or throwing darts at a board or something. Um, you know, I'm working really hard to get the systems in place to um, get good predictions and tracking about our, our finances and for the, the state of Michigan just to go, oh, well, we made a mistake five years ago. We're just, and it's not even, hey, let's talk about how we can pay this back. It's we're withholding these dollars from you. Um, there is a current request um, that's going out on the, the table that they would um, hold off until February to give all of the PHPs time to evaluate the deceased beneficiary file. The state did a take back in 2018 that went back um, those prior fiscal years. It's being reported that Wayne County has already identified some people that are duplicates between the current file and the ones that were withheld in 2018. So again, it's completely unclear. Um, so we're tracking it, we're working and as a group and trying to 
find some degree of clarity. Um, the department also issued notice um, effective January 1st that um, for the folks, the, the dual eligible people with Medicare and Medicaid that were getting um, medication assisted treatment for the, um, the opioid um, recovery issues, um, that they would, um, now that's covered under Medicare, not under Medicaid. So that seems like kind of a quick, easy change, but there's a lot of repercussions and tracking and billing changes and um, provider education and claim edits and things that we need to get into place. So we're working on that. Um, and let's see, deceased beneficiary, the, the revenue files. I guess those are the big areas. Um, and I'll leave my report with all of, that ends the good news check-in from the. I expect better news next month. Nick, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, David, a question on the deceased issue. Uh, we receive our funding based on the total Medicaid population capitated system. We have no way of knowing what the total population, Medicaid population is in the state or in the county. Uh, we know who our folks are who we're paying out for. But we're paid on the basis of the total number of Medicaid recipients in the county. Uh, since we have no way of knowing that, we can't check to see if the state's right. We just basically have to take their word for it, both in terms of what they pay out and what they say they overpaid out. Uh, and the state works on a balanced budget within a fiscal year. We have to come close to balancing our budget within a fiscal year, 7.5% leeway. Have, have we, well, you're objecting to this, I assume, with the, the state. I don't know where the money goes if, uh, if they reduce that because it's Medicaid dollars. Are they remitting money to the federal government as a result of this uh, because that's where the bulk of the money came from? Or are they putting it in the state general fund? Or are they putting, giving it back to us in general fund dollars? Or have we explored legal uh, recourse on the question with, uh, with corporate counsel <laughs> uh, or, or what? I mean, the whole system seems absurd to me that we would have to take benefits away from people in this fiscal year because they didn't give us enough money for the benefits we needed five years ago, but they gave us more than they thought they should have without even having any proof uh, that their figures were inaccurate and the mistake was all theirs. Yes to all of that. And, um, <laughs> so, I don't um, know. Is, we, it we decent, have, is it an acceptable um, answer? I'm just at at the during today's meeting, we were talking about you know legal options as one of the possibilities, um, and there's a number of questions that we can raise. We've been closed in uh, those fiscal years and cost settled. The state's really behind on their cost settlement of the, our closed fiscal years, but they're current up through 2016. So we've closed 15, 16, um, and we've cost settled with the department, and now they're going to go back into a closed fiscal year. From some of the the deceased members are from which fiscal year? 14, 15. 14, 15. So we closed the books on yeah. 14. Um, from our discussions about the FSR, the financial status report, there's, it's a very detailed structured format that's developed by the state and you have to hit certain buckets of money first. Um, this impacts that and it's possible that some of the um, regions or counties would have actually with this change would have hit the, the risk reserve in some of those prior fiscal years. I mean, it can have significant impact on that. And the state's just taking kind of a, you know, blasé approach 
they, they did issue that, um, the notice that, oh, we funded you for deceased people and we're taking it from you this fiscal year. And I, I'll be honest, I was typing a response and then I, I realized that that's probably not okay to send. Um, <laughs> so I deleted that. Um, but subsequently, they've, they've issued, they sent out an email like, really, There's, does anybody have any questions about this? Like they realized how inappropriate the, their email was. Um, and yes, we have a lot of questions. So we will f go through the, the proper steps. Um, this will be on the agenda for tomorrow morning for the in-person meeting. Their finance person is present uh, from the department. Um, we will voice our concerns. We will ask for a delay. We will ask for a clarification about the, the prior activity that they did in 2018 for the deceased people. Um, and then we will formulate our responses. Uh, Bob Sheehan from the association was present at the last part of our meeting. They're um, willing to, you know, go along with us and support that request. Um, whatever, not whatever, but if the game plan we come up with is um, in, in line with their activities and stuff too. But. Now, have they done this calculation for each PIHP, or are they dealing with an aggregate amount? They, they did the statewide, but they broke it down. So in my email, they, they specified that it was a little over $2 million specific to Macomb. Um, and it does go Wayne, Oakland, Macomb as the, the top three. And then the rest of the region, some of the, the other uh, PHP directors said you know, it was a nominal amount in their region. But Were there us, any of those that, uh, any of those PIHPs that lapsed money? During those periods? During that, that year, 14, 15. Um, nobody said that specifically in today's, but there was talk that there could have been, with these changes going back into a closed fiscal year, it could have impacted their, whether or not they hit the risk reserve to what extent um, their use of general fund dollars or um, unrestricted dollars, you know, during those times. It, it's complicated. And for the state of Michigan to not fund us appropriately for October, November, December, and then say, and now in January, we're gonna start taking our, our mistake out of your revenue file too. And, you know, we're really upset with you PHPs for, uh, not handling your finances correctly, it's um, getting very difficult. To just, make. just one other area in that in that regard. Are they giving? Do they tell us when they when they send us money how many Medicaid recipients there are in the county, or they just do the calculation and send you the check? No, there's detail. They give you the yeah. detail. And you said we weren't properly funded for the first three months of this fiscal year, November or October, November, December. Right. What's what's what are you are? I mean, what is the argument for that? I mean, they they do the calculation, they send you the dollars on a capitated basis. The, why why is that? What's the discrepancy in those three months? <laughs> Don't laugh. Uh, asking all these <laughs> easy questions. Um, when it first happened, they changed the Milliman funding model for right. this current fiscal year. So they changed the, um, the, the information rate. that they were basing the, the risk, the weighting of the, the risk and the funding, associated funding. They changed that for this fiscal year from last fiscal year. Um, they also, like I said, changed their, their waiver status. So in doing both of those activities, they miscounted people that were in the um, My Health Link program, the folks with Medicare and Medicaid. So that had a more of a significant impact on the My Health Link areas, which are Wayne and Macomb. I think there's a third. Um, 
and we that's what we heard that there was 41,000 enrollees that were um, not correctly funded subsequently there's problems with the have waiver folks and the have waiver that are in their residential setting um, and get getting the funding appropriate to, to them Macomb County has um, a significant portion of our folks that are on the habilitation support waiver that's specific to folks with developmental disabilities um, mostly adults with developmental disabilities so we're in my health link we have a lot of the have waiver our funding was more impacted from their mistakes and the eligibility files mm -hmm. than the other regions and then they you know they're trying to correct this one that mistake in the following month's funding file and they're not clearly delineating that oh I gave you the extra five hundred thousand dollars over here because we underfunded you for October we're giving you that in um, you know uh, November December so our, our revenue is just kind of this big mass and then we have to try to sift through it and go okay this was for the October adjustment this is for the current December this was a correction in the HAB this was this and again it takes a lot of uh, time energy resources on our side to try to make sure that they're funding us appropriately and they're making a lot of these changes without talking to us and not answering a lot of the questions not providing a lot of detail so tomorrow we plan to try to pin them down at least get on the official record um, all of our concerns and try to get a game plan going forward we're going to recommend um, a statewide meeting with the CEOs CFOs to go through all of the, the funding and see if we can straighten it out and this is all on the Medicaid and Healthy Michigan side yeah yeah it, do you have an estimate of what they underfunded us if it's if it's assuming I'm assuming you wouldn't be complaining so much if they had overfunded <laughs> for those three months but uh, what what we're doing okay there was um, one of uh, one of the PHPs on the call um, is having cash flow problems because of the, the errors that, that that's not my question my question no but we're doing okay my question is do you have no. an estimate of how much they've underfunded us for those three months not yet thus far not in a detail that I would be willing to share. Thank you. Any other board members with anything else? Uh, I just want to mention that Barbara is going to be reaching out via email to the members of the Policy and Legislative Affairs Committee to set up a meeting in the next few weeks. So keep your eyes open for that. Anybody else? If I. It, just Nick, go ahead just briefly I sent a memo around to everybody today you didn't get yours but you, you probably have me blocked I think. <laughs> no if yeah I'll resend it to you if you didn't get it uh, yesterday yesterday yeah today is Wednesday yesterday there was a uh, the, the mental health association in Michigan which is the largest advocacy group and the oldest advocacy group for people with mental illness and the ARC, which is a major group uh, for uh, people with developmental disabilities statewide, called a meeting of all of the major statewide advocacy organizations, the State Community Health Association, our association. Um, there was a labor representative, AFSCME was there, uh, and several others of us who've just been active for a variety of reasons, or a total of 19 of us at that meeting to discuss where we go in the post-298 era. Uh, I, what I sent you today and uh, ask you to take a look at is a list of, uh, I think there's 14 principles that two-thirds or more, and most of them were, more, were virtually unanimous, uh, agreed to tentatively by those groups obviously they can go back f further they conflict pretty much with what 
the state, without saying it, conflict a great deal with what the state proposal is that's out there now on, on reform in a number of areas. Uh, so please take a look at those, and particularly for the committee members or others who want to participate in the committee, uh, because we do need to discuss those. Uh, it, during the meeting, uh, 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 Bob Sheehan, uh, our CEO, uh, got an email that he didn't know about until after the meeting, obviously, because he was in the meeting, as was Alan Bolton, um, asking him uh, to consult with the local CMHs uh, and PHPs and to start working on the development of a proposal for a public sector SIP. The, their proposal is to essentially eliminate the PIHPs and create for or create statewide integrated behavioral health, uh, physical health models called SIPs and those SIPs, there are four models. Uh, one would be basically a 298 model of HMO run SIP. The other two, two uh, systems would be essentially combinations of public and private, and then there would be one public model which the CMHs would put together. The public model requirements are impossible for the public sector to meet as they're currently, and they're now aware of that because we've made them aware of David did, I did, several others did. Uh, so they're looking at that. But he got a letter asking him to start that process, so they're moving along quickly. We are in the process of a smaller group of the 19 of taking the, the 14 principles that we put together and trying to clean it up a little bit. These are draft basically statements of principle that we want to put in format that is, for lack of a better term, politically correct when we distribute it to the department and uh, the, uh, the legislature and, and, and after all of these associ associations, if they should sign on or will sign on, um, and we'll see where that goes from there. But that's the beginnings, the seeds of a coalition uh, which would react to um, redesign and be looking at uh, other options of redesign. The other thing that I'd bring to the committee's attention, even though none of us are at the town hall meeting to get today, and I, the rest of the town halls are listed on the department's website, I don't know if any of us will make it there, is that they are looking to prioritize information at these town hall meetings from consumers or family members of consumers. So we have some of those on our board that may want to participate in that, but basically Reinstein, for instance, uh, said he was going to go tonight uh, as uh, a consultant for the Mental Health Association, but he wasn't going to testify because he wanted, they wanted to hear primarily from consumers, from the public, not from the associations. The associations will have their day. In fact, I think it's the 29th. Several of the advocacy groups are scheduled to meet with Sarah and the department, and I, Dave's already told you about times the board's going to meet. So I just wanted the membership to be up to date on that. At, at, we're trying to get... Uh, a date for a policy and legislative committee and we'll discuss uh, the resolutions that are still pending before us. Please look those over carefully as well as these principles and departmental redesign in the direction that it's going. Thank you, Nick. Uh, one final reminder, next Thursday, week from tomorrow, is the Metro Region Dinner hosted by Wayne. Let Barbara know if you can attend. Anybody else with... Anything else? Megan, go ahead. Just a question. <clears throat> can I ask, can we just go over really quick what the next upcoming week we have are? Because I, I, like, I just want to make sure I got it all. Sure. This is what I have, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dave. There's a recipient rights meeting <laughs> on the 13th at 7.30 a.m. And then I have another one, another recipient rights meeting on Wednesday the 15th. They're going to be back to back on the 15th, correct? Yes. And at 7.30 on the 15th. Okay. 
And then we have full board on the 22nd. Did I miss anything? Okay. Ryan and Salita. What did I miss? Just pick up where Megan left off. Last year there was an email sent of all the board meetings. And then that way I could send it to put it in my calendar. That way I know every. Do we have that sent out? We're going to the agenda for the next the full board meeting. Oh, we have to vote on the date? Yeah. Okay. It's just for the record, but. So we'll see that in two weeks. Yeah, you'll get it next week for sure. Selena? I cannot make it on the 15th. I have a meeting with Sarah Estes that day. Yeah. And Lana. Lana mm -hmm. Finkel's here. So we have to get a chairperson. Yeah, and Linda's not here. I know, and Kathy's not going to be here either. So? I'm not going to be here either. I'm going to be in Lansing. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to be in No. You don't have to. No. It's, it's a matter of hearing the appeal from Yeah. So that morning, whoever shows up, so put your names in a hat and yeah. pull out the chair. Pardon? How many are going to occur on the 15th? Three. They're the same. Three. Same. It's the same family, just right. different children. Oh. Who's your brother? Different, no, different cases, different, different incidents. Different incidents. Yeah. Okay. Linda's the. Oh, Linda's the. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Megan, go ahead. Let, yep, let Barbara know. Perfect. Anybody else? Um, just one more update to the winter conference. The, I sent that email out. That's February 4th and 5th. Um, if you're interested in going, um, please let Barbara and I know, and um, or Lynn and Barbara and I know, and we'll help with the registration and everything. I am planning to be there, um, so if you're planning to be there too, let me know and we'll try to touch base. All right, seeing nothing else, we will close other agenda items. Hearing of the public, no one from the public is here. We will close hearing of the public and I will take a motion to adjourn. Motion from Tony, perfect. Support from Ryan, all in favor? <laughs> Aye? Good, we're adjourned. Have a good night, everyone.